many, Jokic, many years ago. Yeah. It was like the first year I was in Cleveland, uh, Shaq was on the Cavs. Yep. Played for the Heat. Played for the Celtics. I forgot he played for Boston. I I didn't remember that at all. That was another cup of coffee thing, yeah. right? He was on his way he, out. He bounced like, around to like three teams in like the last two years he played. Yeah. And the most amazing thing, really, if you're familiar at all with Shaquille O'Neal's career, is that he's not that tall. Alan, see me after the show. <laughs> <laughs> You met the guy. You uh, I know. That, I so love tough. posting that photo of any chance I get, anything Shaq related, I post that photo of us because, like, I come up to his nipple. Yeah. So I just post me in full, and then the uh, frame cuts off, like, at his chin or whatever. And I'm like, hey, happy birthday to Shaq. I'll probably post it today. It's so stupid, but it cracks me up. So Shaq's 52 today. How about that? Pride of Newark, New Jersey. Seven one three hundred twenty five pounds. That's a that's a heavy heavy guy, heavy guy. And again, he wasn't nimble, right? He kind of lumbers up and down the court. But um, you know, he's had uh, uh, one of the more successful post pro uh, basketball careers. He's uh, selling you icy hot. And he's uh, shilling for insurance companies and all this stuff. And that's all anybody wants when it's all over for him in sports is you want to be able to shill. And he has done a good job of that. Yeah. Yep, he has. So um, uh, Shaq's a birthday today. Happy birthday to him. Al Molina Moy is a rock funk soul guitarist and singer from Minnesota. Oh, it says she's from Cleveland. All right, well. All right, well, maybe she comes from that uh, Prince school or something. I don't know. But she'll be over there tomorrow night if you're hip to her. Trey Young is out injured. Ooh, does that mean we're going to have uh, an advantage over the Atlanta Hawks if Trey Young is out? That's probably true, yeah. Hmm. But he, uh, I mean, we have an advantage over them anyway. They're pretty bad. Okay. Um. Oh, so are you guys hip to the Iditarod? You know what the Iditarod is, pound cake? I do not. Yeah, it's the when they um, it's the dog sled thing. It's that ra- the Iditarod. It's the race where the dog sled. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw a Disney movie about it, a Disney Channel original movie about it, with uh, who was it? C- Cuba Gooding Jr. Junior. Snow Dogs? Yep, Snow Dogs. That was a Disney original movie? No, I think that was no. in theaters. That, that was, was in like theaters. A movie movie. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. Disney produced it. Uh, I'm sure they did, but I, I, I'm sure and I sure I'm sure they played it Dist- on the Disney dist- Channel all the time. Distributed by Walt Disney Pictures. No, okay. Disney but that's Studios. not a Disney mm-hmm. Channel. Movie. Right. Okay. Yeah. Their enough. studio distributed it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, about uh let's go back to 1985. When a woman on the Iditarod Trail was the first person to shoot a moose out with there. What? Huh? What did she shoot him with? Well, I shouldn't say shot. She 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 wasn't channeling Woody Allen or anything. And I like shot that. a moose. She was, um, a moose had come out, and she uh, had to uh, uh, beat it. She had to fend it off. A woman, great name, by the way. It was, uh, her name was Susan Butcher. It's almost like she was made for it. 1985, Susan Butcher is leading the Iditarod when a moose comes into view there and it starts going after her, going after the dogs. This is a long-distance race, right? This is in Alaska. It's Anchorage to Nome. And so there's moose all along the route. And this woman uh, uh, had to fend off one of the other, the, the people, the pilots of these things are called the mushers. Mush, mush. You know, they get the, the dog sled going. The humans in charge are called the mushers. They're the ones that are steering these uh, dog pulled sleds. And so Susan Butcher had to fend off a moose with a pickaxe. Um, it killed a couple of her dogs and injured 13 others. That's almost the entire run of the dogs because I think you only have about 15 or 16 on these. Why did they make the movie The Grey when they could have made The Moose? Yeah. This is crazy. So that was 1985. And I shot a moose. And now someone else has killed another moose. 
a guy named Dallas Seavey. He shot it. This guy had a handgun. He didn't have a rifle. You know, we were talking about handgun v. rifle yesterday when you're out there in the wilderness. This guy had a handgun. I mean, if that's what you got and you got a moose that's not going to leave you alone. Yeah. Got to pull down. I wonder why he didn't have a rifle. Maybe it was just too big to carry. Maybe so. Or maybe he had it and he maybe ran he's out of like ammo. Bill and he wants to dominate whatever his opponents are with his bare hands. Wasn't that what you said, Bill, yesterday during our gun conversation? Yeah, but I... No, Bill said he wanted bear hands. Did I mishear oh, you? Is you that did mishear you? me. I oh, want right. to bear arms. If I'm going okay. to kill, kill something, I want to use my bear hands. But I'm saying maybe that's this guy, too. But then he, but he cheated and used a gun. Yeah, he didn't choke a moose. He shot a moose. And I shot a moose. So Dallas CV had told the Iditarod officials that he was forced to kill a moose with a gun. After the moose ran out... Trying to steal his wallet. Yeah, he was in a bad part of the uh, the sled Forest. trail there, yeah. And uh, it got tangled up with the dogs, because you're trying to protect these dogs. You know, these, this is like a big sponsored event. This guy's racing for Anchorage Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Uh, this guy, Dallas Seavey, is tied for the most Iditarod wins ever at five. Um... But he said the moose fell on his sled, and then it got sprawled all out, and he shot the moose. And then he uh, g- he said he gutted it. Is that what you're – are you supposed to do that? or? I mean, you're going to make just... sure it's not going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Both guts I out. Get... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. He cut it open like uh, Luke in the Tauntaun. I imagine that was just to – Somehow preserve the meat as best you can. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, he um, he had to drop a dog that had been injured in the moose encounter, and then they flew the dog to Anchorage. But, you know, they're out there. They're out there in the Alaskan tundra, and they're doing this race, and they're running into all kinds of... Uh, I'm surprised this doesn't happen every year. The Alaska state troopers say that every effort was being made to salvage the meat. So I guess you're right. Yeah, you don't want yeah. it to die for no reason. I like understand. Be, I mean, you know. That moose meat, that's valuable. Yeah. Good jerky. Yeah. But it's race yeah. rules, which I didn't realize. Race rules is that the musher must gut the animal and then report it to race of it. Hey, guys, there's a gutted moose back there. FYI. You know what this actually makes me think of? We have too many deer, right? Mm-hmm. NASCAR is a very popular sport. Mm-hmm. Do I have to say anything else? You do. We put some NASCAR tracks <laughs> in the forest. Mm-hmm. And then if these guys hit a deer, they have to gut it. That way we're taking down the population of the deer. Uh, Wait, we have, to, we have to build way. car? We have to build race tracks in the forest? Yeah, but don't put anything <laughs> around it so that the deer can try to thin the herd a little bit. I see. I mean, for their protection. Mm-hmm. But then you got to get out of the car and gut the deer right there. Preserve the meat, report it to the race officials. Hmm. Probably not my best idea, but no, listen, there, top five. there <laughs> are no top bad five. ideas around here. <laughs> there we just talk them out and see if there's anything viable there. Um, so even though uh, Pound Cake's ears probably perked up when I said I did a rod, <laughs> that's not what this is. Was this he mean a... to you? <laughs> <laughs> you hate him when I call was him Rodney. Again? Call him Rodney, you hate him. <laughs> Did he treat people bad? <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> Did he leave a 5% tip? Yeah. On a $300 bill? Oh, no, that's not mean. That's cheap. Uh, that's, a, that's a no-no. That's how I've oh. got a homeless guy. I want him to slam down that $20 bill. <clears throat> Bitch, and then walk out. That's hot. One of the cast members of the um, Nat Geo reality TV show Life Below Zero, about life in rural Alaska, was along the route. And uh, he mentioned that he hadn't had to, he'd had run ins with a uh, moose, but um, he didn't kill it. He said he punched it in the nose. Now we're talking. <laughs> That's what I'm about. Yeah. You, you just square it with the moose, pop it in the nose. The moose runs off. You don't have to kill it. Yeah. But he knows you're the boss. It runs off going, arr, 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 arr. <laughs> I did a rod is a thousand mile race across Alaska. It'll end next week when the winning musher comes off the Bering Sea ice and crosses under the arch finish line in Nome. This guy had to uh, 
shoot the moose. There's other people punching him in the nose. You really got to keep your head on the swivel. And I shot a moose. But um, pretty wild. All right, I'm going to swap out my headphones. We're going to start the specs on this NASCAR deer in the woods thing. (laughs) And uh, we're going to speak to the Ohio Department of Transportation. Maybe they've got something that they can um, help us out with. Because, again, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think it needs a little massaging. I have stain tickets for you, too. Uh, They are coming to do MGM Northfield Park uh, with some friends. So if you want to see them back in action, I'll hook you up. After the break, 35192 for anything else.